What's up, my friend? Welcome back to another video. And today I just wanted to do a quick one on articulation management. So I think this is really important. A lot of people wonder how you can uh, use articulations effectively in your session. Should we use key switches or individual articulation tracks? Very, very common question. And I want to address that and my personal approach in this video. And I hope it will make sense and give you some ideas uh, for your next mock-up as well. In case you don't have it yet, I want to give you access to my on-demand workshop called the Complete Composers Framework. If you're at all struggling with your compositions, orchestrations, or mixes, this is a step-by-step -step framework that will take you from the initial idea to the polished final master. And I'll show you what those steps are, how to get from step one to all the way to the very end. And also my virtual orchestration roadmap is in there too, which goes through the three-step process for going from you know the beginning idea in your mock-up all the way to the very end of the arrangement. It's jam-packed full of value and I want to give it to you 100% for free. So click the first link below in the description and you can get access to that right away. Just fill in your details there and I'll shoot it over to you immediately. All right. So with that being said, let's kind of dive on in. I think what I'll do here, and I'm using my Disney orchestral medley here as an example, but I will play for the first time in forever. This is the section I just want to highlight and show you how I handle articulations. Um, pay attention to the solo violin. That's the Joshua Bell violin throughout, okay? And uh, yeah, then, then we'll pause and talk about it. So here we go. So this is a little bit of an intro, and then here's where the theme starts. All right, and let's stop there. So you could probably hear that, well, you first of all, you can see that all of those articulations are combined within the one track, right? We just have one Joshua Bell violin uh, playing the melody, and that is the melody in its completion. So basically starts here. Right? So you might be wondering, well, how do, how do you actually go between all those di different articulations? And the natural answer there would be using key switches. And so that leads me into my personal approach. I prefer to use key switches whenever possible because it helps me maintain more clarity and more of a streamlined approach in my session. I prefer using key switches much more than having separate articulation tracks. Um, the, the main benefit of key switches is, the, is that clarity and that cleanliness within the one track. Because if you imagine having a solo violin on the orchestral score, you don't, you don't see like violin one solo, violin one, uh, sorry, violin one um, sustains, violin one staccato, violin one marcato or anything like that, right? All the articulations are marked within that one part, that one line on the score. So I prefer to stick with this as well working in my session, and we have to use key switches to actually go between those different articulations. So the only time I'll use separate articulation tracks is maybe if one of the tracks doesn't have like, let's say enough attack on a sustain, and I need an additional attack on the sustain to really let it bite through the mix a little bit more, then maybe I will load in an additional staccato patch of that same instrument and play that staccato at the beginning of that sustain note when it comes in. So then it has a bit more bite there. But uh, let me let me find the Joshua Bell track here. So let's kind of go up. Uh, here it is, right here. So let me unmute this, and we can have a listen to it on its own, and then we can also look at the session, or sorry, the patch as well, and how it's going between those different articulations. I think it was in the string string um, patch here. So let's see. Instance. Let's go down. Tina Guo, blah, blah, blah. Here's the Joshua Bell violin. All right, so let's have a listen and watch the articulations. I'm going to solo this up as well. Two, three, four. go. So now if we take a look at the region itself, we can see the MIDI and we can see the key switches here. So let's come that in, put that in a little bit. So here are the melody notes. And by default, the, the Joshua Bell violin loads in as legato. So what you have to do is know what those controls are, like where all the key switches are and uh, intuition, blah, blah, blah. 
but the character is kind of like the whole. So yeah, art going between the different articulations is pretty important if you want to create a believable line. And this actually took me quite a long time to put together uh, to choose the right articulations because this patch, this library is very powerful. There's so many variations on the same articulation, lots and lots of round robins, all that stuff. So I really had to pay attention to where those key switches were coming in. So I started off with a staccato articulation. As you can see, that comes in before the first note. And all of that is staccato until this note right here, that F, that is a, a sustain, but with like, oh, maybe I can't actually hover over it because it just says articulations, but it's, it's, a, it's an attack, but with a soft release. So it kind of decrescendos away because I was going for the dun, 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 dun. I wanted the attack at the beginning, but I wanted it to fade away a little bit, right? Then go back to uh, staccato. And then again, that soft release, duh. And then, we go. And then the very end, you see that intense release there as well, because this library actually responds to aftertouch. So I played the G to get that hard sustain, but I also pressed to the very bottom of the key near the end of the note to activate that, that intense release. So play. And then it crescendos, right? You can hear those those two uh, samples being stitched together, but in the context of the fuller mix, you don't really notice it as much. Second half, same idea. Again, the soft releases. Legato there. And then again, that intense release. So playing with a higher velocity to activate that harder sustain, but then with that after touch pressing to the very bottom to get that uh, big release at the very end there. So all this to say, you should learn your key switches for your libraries. And my personal approach is just to keep things streamlined and keep things simple. Yes, it might take more time to, to put in key switches, but I would prefer to see all my notes on the one track if possible. I wanna see my main themes. Um, especially on the one track. And if I have to use key switches to go between articulations, then so be it, right? Because that's the most natural way to go between the different articulations. If you have different tracks have, having different articulations, then you're going to see some melody notes there, some melody notes on the other tracks and blah, blah, blah. And yes, you have a bit more flexibility, but I, I think you sacrifice that cleanliness and it becomes more confusing later if you're trying to like mix different tracks that have different articulations that are supposed to belong to the same instrument, same same part, it gets a little more confusing there. So yeah, the, the more options a library personally gives you, the more time you're gonna take to fiddle around with it and make it as convincing as possible for it. But for lots of other libraries, they have mainly like one or two samples per note. Um, those are a lot easier to program because you don't have as much choice to choose from basically, and you can still get some pretty good results. But this, yeah, this library in particular is really, really powerful. And I took a lot of time to kind of craft this performance and ultimately I was happy with it, but yeah, it, it was a combination of velocities, um, after touch for those notes, uh, key switching for the different articulations, of course, and uh, yeah, just a few other things as well. But yeah, that's my personal approach. So manage your articulations through key switches if you can. And then if you really need a separate articulation patch or separate you know, track for, adding uh, you know adding an articulation on top of an existing one for some reason like maybe to enhance the texture or give it some more bite if you want more attack on a note then you want to maybe put a staccato or spiccato on top of a sustained note then you can do that because then there, then it's, it's it's more difficult to work around with key switches in that regard if the sample isn't included in the original patch right so that's just my personal approach. I would love to know from you if, if this is your approach as well, or if you prefer individual articulation tracks for every single track that you do. Um, there, I guess there really is no right or wrong, but you just kind of decide which one you're more comfortable with, which one suits your workflow a little bit better. So yeah, let me know below. And again, if you don't have my workshop just yet, the Complete Composers Framework, I would love to give it to you completely free. It's an on-demand workshop that goes over my complete process for going from the initial idea all the way to the polished final master. Plus you'll get my virtual orchestration roadmap completely free there as well. It's super jam packed, full of value. And again, you can get it using the first link in the box below. Just register and I will send it to you over right away. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video and I'll see you very, very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.